Hey guys, Robert 3D Prince Cape. Today I'm going to show you how to install a BL Touch on an SKR Mini board. Uh, I'm going to use my Ender 3 Pro here as an example, but we'll walk through the entire process start to finish. Uh, basically, this is going to be broken into three parts. The first section is going to be the physical install, and then we'll go over some of the firmware changes you have to do, or if you just can run the pre compiled firmware, we'll talk about when that's an option, and then we'll go over setting the Z offset. If you have any questions about the process, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right, guys, the first thing I wanted to go over is how we actually install the BL Touch on our Z axis. Uh, here, I just have a mount as part of my fan duct cover, and I have a couple other ones here that I can show you as an example. This was my old one, it just mounted right here. And then on this one, it had a bracket that came off and it mounted on that. Or there might also be a um, just standard black bracket that you're using. It just mounts right here. It comes off. It's very basic. Um, but that would work with the stock fan duct cover and all of that. Um, basically, all you got to do is go ahead and put the screws in uh, to hold it in place. And then connect the wire to the back side of the BL Touch. I didn't think it necessarily made sense for me to take this apart to show you because it's pretty straightforward. The only thing you really need to pay attention to is you want to make sure that when this probe is engaged that it's lower than the nozzle because if the nozzle hits first, you're going to have an issue. Uh, if it's not with this adapter, you can adjust it. You can raise it up or down. If you have the standard um, just black metal adapter, you might have to put spacers underneath it so that it actually lowers the BL Touch a little bit. Uh, so that's the only thing to really uh, point out here. And then from there, you'll just run your wire back up around with the rest of the wires, and then you'll bring it down into the main board and we'll connect it there. So that's what we're gonna talk about here next. All right, I went ahead and flipped the printer over. Now we've got to take off the cover that's surrounding the main board. Uh, for the Ender 3 Pro, there was one screw on the top that I already took out, and then you got the three on the bottom here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those off really quick. All right, now that that's off, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on the main board so we can actually see what we're looking at here. All right, I went ahead and zoomed in on the board here, and then here's the wires for the BL Touch. You've got the black and white for the probe stop, and then you've got your blue, red, and yellow. Um, basically, blue is gonna be ground, red is gonna be a plus five volt, and the yellow is gonna be a signal. If your cables are not in this order, you will need to uh, adjust them. You can pull up on these pins here and pull the cables out and just realign them. Uh, but you want to make sure that it's going to be blue, red, yellow, or if you have a clone, it might be like brown, red, yellow or something like that. I think the ground is a different color. Um, I know by default, if you have one of the BL touches that came with the transfer board, um, they have the blue and red swapped and that is bad. It will cause some smoking on the board. Uh, I've had at least a dozen people report that to me. Uh, so just make sure that you have these pins the right way. And then this is just going to plug in uh, right here where the BL Touch goes at the bottom of it. So you should have two pins left on top. And again, paying attention to the order here, it's going to be blue, red, yellow from the bottom going up. And then now we have to make a decision. There's two ways to wire this probe stop. Um, first one is you can change the adapter and put it right next to the other three pins and it will be as part of just the BL touch and then your Z stop is still going to be in place. Uh, the other one is you would just plug, unplug the Z stop and then plug uh, the probe stop into where the Z stop is, which is what I'm going to do. So that's just going to go right here. So that just plugs in there and then your Z stop will just remain unplugged. If your BL Touch came with all five pins together, you're gonna to wanna to just plug it in with the BL Touch port. Uh, it's easy to change to the firmware. They have the pre-compiled version for both options with the um, Big Tree Tech firmware, or if you're gonna build your own firmware, uh, just grab the latest Marlin fix. Uh, you can just swap out two values and you'll be good to go. 
and I'll cover that here when we jump over to the firmware. But that really covers everything as far as the install goes. I'm gonna put this back on and then we need to get our measurements for our X and Y offsets. Awesome. All right, guys, I went ahead and put the cover back on off camera. I uh, didn't think you needed to see that, but it's just putting those four screws back in. Now we need to measure our offset on the X and Y axis. That's gonna be added to the firmware. If you're using the standard uh, black metal adapter and the pre-compiled firmware, you don't have to measure it. If you're using anything else or you plan on using the Marlin firmware, you will have to measure it. So I just got a pair of calipers here. I'm going to measure the distance from the probe to the nozzle on the X and Y axis. All right, so I got 47 on that, so I'm just gonna write that down. And then we've gotta do the same thing on the Y axis. So I'm gonna turn the printer a little bit to get that. I got 23 on the y-axis. All right, so now we just gotta go jump over to the computer and we'll set up our firmware. All right, guys, the first thing I wanna cover here is the pre-compiled firmware. Um, Big Tree Tech has it available on their GitHub account and I'll link to this in the description below. But if you're just using the standard bracket and uh, you wanna just use the pre-compiled firmware, um, that's fine it works just fine just know that some of the other features like baby stepping and stuff probably won't be enabled but what you would want to do is depending upon how you wired it you want to grab the right uh, bundle if you went with the wiring option where you had all five wires plugged into the bl touch port um, you're going to want to go with just the standard bl touch binary uh, which will be right here so it'll be firmware dash bl touch dot bin you'll download that rename it to firmware.bin and put it on your SD card. And then if you went with the way that I had it wired, where I had the three wires here, and then the probe stop connected into the Z-stop port, you're gonna wanna use the firmware bundle for Z-homing. So it's gonna be right here. It's firmware-blt-4-Z-homing. Um, that's gonna be the one you wanna use. So you download that, rename it to firmware.bin, put it on your SD card and plug it in your printer. And then that will be everything you need to do if you're going with the pre-compiled version. So before we get into the next section, I want to make a note that I did a video covering how to uh, compile custom firmware for the SKR. Uh, I'll link to that in the description below. Uh, but that's using this firmware bundle here. Basically, you're downloading that. It already has the configuration examples in it. And then you're just making your changes. Um, but I walked through that entire process start to finish there. So if you're not familiar with creating your own firmware, um, I recommend you starting there because I'm not going to cover it in as much detail here. All right. So we're going to need to make a decision if we want to use the uh, Big Tree Tech cut of the firmware. Uh, it's basically, I think, the last stable release. It uh, doesn't have all the bug fixes in it. Or if you want to use the latest bug fix release from Marlin, which would be this guy right here. I opted to use the bug fix branch this time around. Uh, the first time I did the video, I did the um, Big Tree Tech version. So both of them work. Um, there's not much of a difference between the two. So it's really your choice. All right. So in this example here, I am going to use this. So I'm just going to download this. And then I'm going to go over to uh, configurations and go to the GitHub account for that so that we can get the configuration examples that we need. So I'm just going to click here to get the code and download the zip. All right, now you're going to want to unzip the firmware folder. I went ahead and did that off of the recording really quick, uh, just so you don't have to watch. But you just click on it, go down to uh, Extract All, and then that's going to drop it into a folder. From there, you'll open the folder. Um, I created just a folder on my desktop that I'll use for just a working directory, and I copied all of the contents from the config, I mean from the firmware into that directory. So that's what we have here. Uh, I want to make a note, this isn't really covered, but you want to make sure that in the platform.ini, I'm just going to open it with notepad here, that you set the default environment variables here to this. I will put this in the description below. If you opted to go with the version from Big Tree Tech, they will have this already in here, but they... For some reason on the latest release, they took out the underscore 512K and that does cause compile issues. Uh, so 
if you're having issues with the build, you want to open this back up and put in the underscore 512k. All right, now we want to get our config examples. So I'm just going to go into uh, Marlin here and delete configuration and configuration underscore advanced dot h. And then we're going to go over to our configuration examples that we downloaded and then go into Creality, uh, Ender 3 Pro, because that's what I'm using here. And then uh, here we're going to go into the SKR Mini V2. Uh, that's going to give us the uh, starting point for our firmware. So I'm just going to copy these over to the Marlin folder here. And then we're going to load this in VS Code and make a couple changes. All right, so I got VS Code open here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, import my firmware. So I'm just going to go to File, Open Folder. Uh, select the folder that I'm working with and I just did video here and that brought in everything we need again I cover this process in a lot more detail in the other video um, but I'm just walking through the changes that we need to make here for the uh, BL touch all right so open up Marlin and go to configuration.h and there's a handful of changes we need to make here so first we're going to search for BL touch we need to uncomment this line. And then if we scroll up a little bit to where we get to uh, Z Men Probe here, if you have the wiring set up the way that I did in the video, uh, where you have the Z Probe plugged into the Z Stop and the Z Stop not being used, this is how you would run it. If you have the Z Stop still connected and you plug in the uh, five pins into the uh, BL Touch port. You want to comment out this line, so you do this, and then uncomment this. Use probe for Z homing. So I'm just going to revert that change really quick because uh, I have it wired this way. And then we want to go ahead and set our offsets. So we want to scroll down a little bit more till we get to this. I tend to just look for this because it stands out in the firmware, and we want to set the actual offsets that we measured. So remember I had negative 47 and negative 23. So I'm just going to delete that. All right, so negative 47, negative 23. I always leave Z at zero and I never, I always use whole numbers. All right, next we want to comma out the min software in stop for the Z axis to allow you to go negative. So I'm going to search for that, just min underscore software. It's going to be this guy right here and just uh, comment that out. And then we need to enable Z safe homing. So we'll search for that Z safe. And it's going to be this guy right here. We want to uncomment to that. All right, next we want to jump over to the configuration advance file. There's a couple things we have to do here. Um, First thing you want to do is search for BL touch delay. And then you want to uncomment this line, leaving it at the default 500 is fine. And then I also do, and then I also uncomment this BL touch for SW mode. Um, I want to make a note that on some of the clones or off brands that both of these do mess with it. And you might have to comment these back out if you have an off brand. All right, next we want to search for probe offset wizard. Uh, you definitely want this to be enabled because it makes life much easier. And then if you don't know if the firmware is already set to set the probe to plus 10, uh, you can uncomment this as well. This will add another four. Um, ultimately, what this is going to do is it's going to have the homing point be at plus 14 on the Z axis. The extra four here is really just a buffer in case that's not set. All right. And then the last thing we want to do is set up baby stepping. So we'll search for that. Uh, by default, they now have it enabled. If you have the Baytree Tech version, I don't know if they have it enabled and that one by default or not. I know two versions back they did not. Um, so it's worth checking to make sure that it is enabled because it's not always enabled. So here it was enabled. Then I like to uncomment out 
uh, display total and Z probe offset. So I'm just removing those two comments. Oh, and I forgot there's one more thing we need to change back in configuration H before we build. Go ahead and search for auto underscore bed underscore leveling. And then we want to use bilinear. So I'm going to uncomment this and comment this one out. Now we can just go down to our checkbox, go ahead and kick off the build. And again, in the video I did uh, going over the custom firmware process, I cover how to get VS Code set up, get platform IO and everything installed, uh, basically everything needed to get uh, the build going. All right, so that was successful. Now we need to grab that firmware. So I pulled up my directory again here. We want to go back up to the root of it, go into .pio. Uh, just a note here, if you're using a Mac, the dot folders are going to be hidden. So you have to either unhide them or get to them through CLI. Uh, then we want to go into build, uh, then our board, and then this firmware.bin file here, and that's what we need. So we'd put this on the SD card, go put it in the printer, power the printer on, and then we'll be good to go. If you guys run into any issues or have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. And I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Or you can also join us on Discord. There's a lot of people there who've been helping out. All right, so we went ahead and um, imported our firmware. It loaded correctly. Now I'm gonna show you how to uh, set the Z offset. It's pretty easy if you have the TFT35. If you just have the standard display and you enabled the uh, Z offset wizard in the firmware like I showed you to, um, I have a video covering the process to get your Z offset for that. So I'll link to that in the description below. I don't wanna to spend too much time covering that here. I just wanted to walk through this really quick. All right, so what you gotta do is go into a menu, uh, go to movement, go to ABL, and then Z offset, just hit that, and then off. That will turn it on. Now it's going to center this, and then we will uh, just grab a sheet of paper. Um, just printer paper is fine. And then you'll lower the Z axis until you're about at that height, and then it's gonna save that for you. All right, so now it's ready. I just have a sheet of paper here. Keep in mind that this can be the trickiest part of setting up a BL Touch. So that's why I have a video dedicated to that. Uh, I'll, like I said, I'll link to that in the description below. Uh, so if you're questioning what you have or if you don't have the TFT35, uh, go ahead and check out that video. It will help a lot. But basically, just wanna make sure that we're good here. The paper just slides a little bit so we can make adjustments either up or down. Um, All right, so I had it pretty close already, uh, but you'll just want to keep lowering it, like I said, until the paper is just catching underneath the nozzle, between the nozzle and the build plate, and then that's what you're going to want to save. So right now, my offset here is negative 2.71. I'm just going to go to next and next and just save that to our memory so that it persists through the reboots. And that's all there is for the Z offset. Just a couple things to note here really quick. If you start the print and it starts printing in mid-air, um, then your Z offset is too high. You're gonna have to lower it a little bit more. And if you wanted to, you can use baby stepping once the print starts. I covered that in the other video as well, um, just to help you dial in the Z offset perfectly. Because if you're a little bit off here, you don't wanna have to just go back out, try to adjust it and go back into the print. Uh, you can take care of all of it in the printer while you're actually printing. Uh, so it makes the process much easier. All right, guys, so that covers installing the BL Touch on an SKR mini board. If you have any questions about the process or if you ran into any issues, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can.